right, guys, got an exciting video for you today. I am pretty excited about this one. What we're going to be doing is building a ported enclosure uh, for that Pierce Audio 4K15. Um, it's going to be built to spec uh, based on what uh, Pierce Audio sent me as far as airspace volumes is concerned. We're going to be using a 6-inch aeroport that I uh, made out of PVC pipe. And that thing is going to be tuned, uh, tuned very low, um, somewhere around 26 hertz, something like that. So if you want to see that, you want to see me build that, stick around. I'll take you through it. So let me show you what we're gonna do. So that's what we got right now. Okay. Um, thing is about two and a half cubic feet, I think. And it's sealed. Remember we had the port coming out right there, but I had to block it off with that, just with that uh, piece of wood there. And so it's a sealed box. It's a perfect square. I mean, no angles or nothing. I mean, obviously it's a rectangle, it's not a square. But what we're gonna have to do, and this is the only way that this is gonna work without me taking the back seat off. The sub is gonna be here, firing that way. Okay, well, this thing is only about 12 inches tall. So that's a 15 inch sub. So what we're going to have to do is the height of this is going to have to come up and we're going to have to build an angle box. So you can see if I pull this, if I let this seat down. See, we, we got a lot of room down there at the bottom, but not up here at the top, obviously because the seat is angled. So it's gonna be an angled design, which I've never done before. And then the port is gonna come up something like this. So let me show you, let me just go grab it. And I'll show you. This is gonna be something like that. See, it's gonna be on the top of the box firing that way I am going to cut a piece of it off somewhere in there and that way some of it goes into the box and then this port's going to end about right here but I'm going to be tuning this thing low the whole port length is going to be about 30 inches so I'm wanting to tune this thing around 26 27 so we're definitely going to be using the entire length of that port and a plane is flying overhead. Anyway, that's the plan moving forward. So the first step in any box build is you got to go buy the wood and then you got to cut it up into the right pieces. So um, any, any build process needs to start with a plan, right? So I drew everything out. I like to hand draw mine. Um, and then I can calculate the airspace by hand. That's just the way that I like to do it. Um, get an idea for what angles you're going to need and if it's going to fit in the space that you have. Um, that's the most important part. Once you've got your plan, once you know what pieces you need, it's just kind of a cut and paste. You cut all your wood pieces, you glue it together, you run some screws through it. That's the easy part. Um, the hard part is developing what the box is going to look like. I had very limited space back there, so that was kind of a process and as you'll see i ended up with a couple pieces and a couple shapes and designs that didn't weren't going to work so i kind of had to go back to the drawing board but anyway i think what i'm going to do is just play a lot of that footage uh, time lapsed and put some music on it just because there's a lot of footage there 
uh, and I'll cut in between as I need to to kind of explain what I'm doing. You guys have heard the old adage measure twice cut once measure three times cut once right it, it was kind of hard for me to really get a good idea of how big this would be so i just had to test fit a lot of pieces and so here's what we ended up with right something like this so here's our piece that's what the sides are going to look like. Okay, now you can see it's just big enough for this subwoofer. It covers the sub. So we're 16 inches here, 13 and a half here, 19 here. Now I had another piece right there. It's too small. The way that angle is, it just... It wasn't big enough to fit the sub, even though I thought it would be. And then I had more room left when I test fitted it. So if I take this, see this is gonna be right like that. And it's gonna be tight. I mean, you can see that box is barely gonna fit. But then if we pull this up, See, that angle is going to match that seat angle pretty much perfectly. See, and I still got enough room here. Because remember, I still need three quarters of an inch to put my back piece here. Right? So that should, that should work. And see, you can see that angle, come on, focus, is almost perfect. It's about 20 degrees. 
about 20 degrees off of straight up and down. I've got one of those little gravity um, angle finder things. So that's how I decided that. It's like 18, something like that. So anyway, that's what we got. Now I'm gonna make uh, five of these. I got, I'm gonna do a three layer baffle. So one, two, three. Then I'm gonna have a brace piece. Then I'm gonna have an end piece. So there's gonna be five total pieces just like that. I should have had eye protection on uh, I got some gunk in my eye but you know <laughs> know that moving forward do as I say not as I do but when you're done you should end up with something like this two identical pieces so, all right, well, now we got to do this four more times. Excuse me, three more times. Okay, guys, so this is why using your router is worthwhile, right? All right, now I have five identical pieces. Now, three of them are going to be the baffle. One is going to be a brace piece, and one is going to be the other end piece. All right, that turned out pretty good, I think.
Let me show you what I have right now. So there's the box. You can see we put on this back piece in case the glue is still fresh on there. But we got the whole thing. It's a box now. You can see the sub's gonna mount in there like that. Now let me show you what I did. I ended up cutting these square pieces of MDF. There's one on that back piece there. There's one there. There's one, oh, there is not one there. And there's one back there. Just to give it a little bit, a little bit more strength. And then the way this is gonna go, this port, gonna go something like that now I'm gonna cut that off and some of it is gonna go into the box you know maybe 10 inches or so down that way but so it's gonna end probably about right here and stick out there like that anyway coming along it's at least the shape of a box now Got the angle on it, 20 degree. And what we're gonna do here with this edge, uh, we're just gonna round that over with my router and call it good. I didn't really wanna worry about cutting this at an angle. Just more work than what it's worth, especially when I can just take a router and just zip it off right there. And then this edge right here that's too tall, I'm just gonna take my flush trim and cut that off. Anyway, that's how it's coming. All right, guys, so when you're putting these together, you need to test fit, test fit, test fit, test fit, and let me show you why. So this thing is tight in there. It ended up being a little taller than I was, ex <coughs> oh, excuse me. A little taller than I was expecting and a little bit wider right here I don't know my measurement I just didn't quite anyway it is very tight right here so basically what I have to do to shut this is shut the back and you can see it's hitting right here right here see that shuts but now, this does not shut unless I really get in on it. See, I mean, it still didn't shut. I did get it to shut, but it uh, it took quite a lot of, quite a lot. So, I'm wondering what I'm going to have to do is maybe dent this in a little bit or cut a piece of it out. I don't know. Cause I already beveled off this, that edge right there. And that helped, but it definitely didn't fix the problem. So anyway, test fit, test fit, shame on me. I was test fitting it, but I guess not good enough. But while we're here, let me show you what this is going to look like. That port's going to be sticking there right like that. And the sub is going to be sticking out. Come on, focus. Sticking out right there. So it's going to be pretty sweet. But man, it is going to be, it is going to be a tight fit. But I knew that going in. I knew that going in. So anyway. Make sure you are test fitting your stuff as you go along or you might go to put your box in your car and it doesn't fit, which is what's happening to me right now. So anyway, we'll figure it out. Okay guys, so ended up having to really take some material off the box to get it to fit in the car, but I finally got it. So let me show you what I did. What I had to do was I used my router with my 45 degree angle and then I just did some hand sanding. 
And so, what I did, open this up. I took my route, where it was hitting was right here. There's a pole right here in this seat that kind of holds the shape of this seat. And there's also like a spring, yeah, right here. You can see where it was hitting that box. So I took my 45, come on. I took my 45 and I took some meat off the edge of that, as you can see. And then I just hand sanded it down. Now I'm gonna fill all this in, you know, I'm gonna make that smooth. I just wanted to make sure it would fit. And then I took, I hand sanded, uh, sanded these corners down right here and right here because you can see where it was hitting right there and it was hitting on that corner so i had not i drew a i marked this off because i was going to take some material out of this sheet metal and i was like wait 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 so you're going to cut into the back hatch of your car before you try to modify the box i was like no 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 so we ended up modifying the box and now see that shuts this will shut see and then it barely peeks out but there we go it's tight it's tight but i got it and it just took a little bit of shaving on the back side and the front side and now it fits so anyway uh crisis averted so let me show you how the port is going to go on this thing so that's what we got six inch arrow port i just used six inch pvc and i used that uh 90 degree elbow right there okay cut it with my uh chop saw there and then I just used my router and my circle jig to cut out that hole like that. So getting that, that hole was tight. I had to, I had to hammer that on there. Um, so let me show you how this is going to go into the box. Right, so that's what you're gonna see when you open up the back of the trunk. And then this, same thing, use my circle jig, cut a hole. Okay, then that's gonna go in there like that. Now, obviously it's not gonna be sticking out like that. But this hole is a little bit bigger than this hole was. So it'll wiggle down in there and then I'm gonna use some sort of fastener to fasten this to that. And so you'll end up with something like that. Guys, let me show you the port. Uh, really excited the way this came, uh, came out. Um, I did it all off camera simply because Nothing super complicated here. Um, I ended up painting the base and then sticker bombing the port. So this is what it looks like.
guys, I'm already kind of running into an unexpected issue with this. I used this brush to add a texture, uh, but this stuff fills gaps so well that it's not keeping my texture. Like it's smoothing itself out. So I'm just, I guess I'm just gonna have to let it dry a little bit and then run over it with my texture brush again and see if I can get some more texture in there. So that's what it looks like after one coat. Um, I actually like the way this stuff comes out. It's high gloss. It's not necessarily what I was wanting, but also this brush I'm using, since I ruined my texture brush, is actually adding some texture. So we're gonna let this dry for a bit and then we're gonna go with another coat. We might end up with two or three coats. I'm not sure. We'll just kind of see as these coats soak in how many we're gonna have to use. Okay guys, so we got the box painted and I am really happy with the way it turned out. Um, I'll kind of show you guys that I went through a couple of different techniques uh, and left the paint different thicknesses. So if I wanted like a little bit of a heavier, bigger splat, I would leave the paint really thick. And if I wanted a little bit more of like a sprinkle, I would uh, thin it out with some water. So you can see like here, the blue, the silver, some of this purple was left very thick. And then a lot of these little turquoise was uh, very thinned out. And I just used the brush and kind of flicked it on there. And others, I like the blue, I didn't thin it out at all. And that's why it looks very spotty. Cause I would just get a big heavy glob of it and just fling it on there. See like that. And then any mix in between. The thing is when you're doing this kind of paint, you just don't quite know how it's gonna turn out. It's almost like an experiment every time you do it. But I'm pretty pleased with the result. So we're gonna let this bake in the sun for a while. Make sure it's nice and dry and rubber okay yeah make sure it's nice and dry and make sure that this rubber coating is nice and cured before we start trying to load our sub or anything like that oh man guys this thing looks sweet this 
exceeded my expectations. Let me show it to you. Look at that. You got the port tube sticking out the top. Got the splat paint all over it. The sub's gonna mount right in there. See that port sticking down in there like that. Oh man. If it don't sound good, it's gonna look good. So. Next thing we gotta do, mount the sub in it, and then it'll be ready to go. Okay guys, so we're getting pretty close to being able to install the subwoofer in the box. Got it painted, got the port done, got everything done. Now we just need a way to wire this up. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I got these SMD terminal cups from Down for Sound. I've, I've got one installed here already. I've got the hardware pulled out. Um, all I did, I didn't get a video of me doing this, but it's pretty straightforward. I just got a hole saw and burned the shit out of it, as you can see. I mean, that's pretty thick. Uh, but anyway, just took a hole saw. This is a um, two and three quarter. Drilled me two holes right there. And then these fit right in there like that. Um, another thing I did, I, I always like to put a little seal around these types of things. I use that right there. This stuff. This uh, foam, this closed cell foam stuff that they make. All I did was cut some little strips, put it around here. I'm gonna do the same with my subwoofer. It makes really good speaker gaskets. And then I did use T-nuts on this. I always like to use T-nuts instead of just running screws. So I only have three of them in there because I had a couple of blowouts, you can see. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but I had a couple blowouts. And then that bolt right there is just a random hole that I did drill through it when I didn't think I was gonna use the terminal cups. And then I changed my mind. So now I got a bolt running through there just so I don't, uh, don't have a hole in my box. But anyway, we'll get these put in place and then we'll be able to wire the sub in here. This type of thing. However long you think it's gonna take you, it usually takes you two or three times that. And if you think you're done running to the hardware store, you definitely aren't. So let me kind of show you what I mean. So finally got these installed. I did not like these screws. I don't know why I bought hex head, or excuse me, Phillips head. I just don't like them because you can't really get any kind of power on them without stripping them out. So I went back and bought these Allen, uh, these Allen head bolts with a lock washer and a flat washer. I like that a lot better. I mean, that just feels sturdy and I can just get that as tight as I want it. Same here. And then I had to change out, I had to change out the ends of my subwoofers or subwoofer wire, the direct leads, because I went to install this and realized that, sorry, the ones that were on there are too small to fit the bolts that run in those terminals. So back to the hardware store it was to Put some new ends on these but we're finally ready i think to get that subwoofer in that box let me do all that off camera and then i'll show you guys what i got going so here is what we ended up with you can see now this is why i decided to use two terminals instead of just one 
that way I can use them as a distro block. So we got uh, got them wired. This will be wired at a half ohm uh, right now, but if I want to wire this up to two ohm, then all I got to do is move these jumpers around. That's why I did it like this. And so then you can see what it ended up looking like on the inside. You know, just got those wired through there like that. Okay, so now what we got to do is put that in that hole. And what we're going to use to do that is, where did we go? Ah, right, here we are. These are quarter 20, and we got the Allen key. Okay, so getting ready to drop this subwoofer in there. You can see I got my speaker gasket in place. Get this thing in there. See, I just put all those in place, make sure the holes lined up, and then I just went like I was changing a tire. I just went in a star pattern until it was tight. That way you know that it's going down even. And I can pull this out of here, put it back in as many times as I want. And I know those holes aren't gonna get messed up in, in my box. That's why I use those T-nuts. And I initially wanted to use these lock washers, but they're just too, they, they don't really fit. You know, they, they would, they hit this edge and then you can't really get it down in there good enough. So the head of that cap holds it on there good enough. So anyway, box is done. Oh. 